here this morning. Amen. This may be the last morning we ever meet, and this may be the week the Lord comes back. He is going to come back. No, no question about that. Father, I pray that you give me the gift of teaching this morning, Lord. Open my heart to receive the word and open the hearts of the people to receive it. Give us wisdom. Give us insight into the scripture and give us wisdom, Father, how we relate to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, turn to Revelation 13, verse 13. That's an easy one to remember, isn't it? Revelation 13, 13. The scripture says, He doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now note carefully. Go back to verse number 3. Thirteen three, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. They worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, If you'll remember when Satan uh, tried, attempted to tempt our Lord Jesus Christ, he offered him all the kingdoms of the world a moment of time. He said, It's been delivered to me and I can give it to whomsoever I will. That's quite a thing. Now you see him doing it. In the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation, he's giving power and authority to this, uh, to this uh, Antichrist. There's three Antichrists that show up here, and he's giving him power and authority. It's important to understand that because a lot of people uh, skyrocket to fame. And uh, the talent... They have talent, but I know people that have more talent that have not skyrocketed to fame. Everybody, anybody know like somebody like that? Sure, it happens. I'm going to start with you this morning. We'll talk about something. It's called crop circles. You can't talk about UFOs without talking about crop circles. A lot of folks have been kept in the dark with it, and um, and probably there's a, there's an agenda going on. But before I get into that, I'm going to talk about the Silver Bridge of, 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 of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. How many of you have ever heard of that? The Silver Bridge, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. On December the 15th, 1967, this bridge collapsed and 46 people lost their lives. 46 people. Terrible tragedy. They interview people today. I saw the interview yesterday of one woman that was on the bridge when it collapsed. And she said that she had pulled past a section of the bridge. And for some reason, something told her to back up. So she backed up. And when she did, she backed across the section of the bridge that collapsed. And when it collapsed, she's sitting there right on the edge. If she hadn't moved back, she would have gone down with it. And so she gave her testimony. A lot of them, it's, uh, that, that area uh, is still, not, they're not over it. You, you know, they lost a lot of loved ones up there. It's a horrible thing to happen. And uh, this bridge uh, is in West Virginia, but I think it, uh, it's, it's the, it's that river is the uh, separation between West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Something weird happened before that bridge collapsed. Very weird. And it had been going on since 1966. It was the appearance of some kind of a creature, and they call it the Mothman. Have you ever heard of him? They made a movie about it, The Mothman. And this story's been on a number of television uh, documentaries. And he apparently had appeared to quite a few people. But the most important thing about it is that it uh, portended something terrible, some terrible tragedy that was going to happen after it happened. Now, what was The Mothman? Well, he probably fits in the same category as the greys of UFOs. And, uh, and different, uh, different creatures that you, you people have, uh, have uh, had interaction with. I'm not up here this morning to try to define exactly who the Mothman is, but I want to tell you this. We live in strange times now. We really do. Things are changing around us, and we need to be aware of what's going on. We live in strange times. But there is no doubting the fact that uh, December the 15th, 1967, 46 people lost their lives, and the people up there in, in Mount Pleasant 
West Virginia are still uh, reeling and suffering over the loss of loved ones, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, husbands and wives. It's a horrible thing to see a bridge collapse like this one did. It went down and, uh, and with the people there. Um, the proximity to the Mothman causes confusion, extreme fear, and psychological distress that can last months and lead to death or insanity. If he shows up, you have an encounter with him, you may wind up committing suicide. It's a powerful spiritual force. Remember that. Remember this. UFOs, the people who have been abducted by UFOs or they have had contact with UFO inhabitants, have had a spiritual experience. Powerful, powerful spiritual experience. There are those who say that they claim to have seen the Mothman before the 9-11 disaster. In other words, they connect him with what happened up there in New York and the collapse of the 35W Bridge in Minneapolis. And so the point goes on about the Mothman. That's all I'm going to say about him. But the reason I say that is because I want to keep you abreast with the idea that there is a spirit world out there and that spirit world is beginning to manifest itself. That's what's important, it's beginning to manifest itself. Now what are crop circles? What are they? They are a, an enigma. They started showing up a few years ago. A lot of them showed up in England. As a matter of fact, one researcher said that 80% of all of the crop circles in England were within a, just a few miles of Stonehenge. Now, how many's ever heard of Stonehenge? I've been there, been to Stonehenge. And uh, there's one mountain there, a risk elevation, where as you approach Stonehenge, there's a huge horse. I'm saying big now. We're talking about uh, 300 feet long, probably, or 400 feet long, that's cut into the side of the hill. And you can, in other words, that big, you can see it a long way off. There are all these mounds, all these mounds around Stonehenge. Every uh, summer solstice and winter solstice, the people they gather there, the witches especially, and paranormal group, and they gather at Stonehenge because in, 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 in June 21st is the longest day of the year, and December the 21st, the shortest day of the year. And the light strikes a certain place at Stonehenge, and there is definitely, it draws every kind of kook on the face of the earth is drawn to Stonehenge, believe me. I mean, they come in there. All you gotta do is a little research and you'll be amazed at what you see. But, but these crop circles, crop circles, if, you, if you've ever seen a photograph of one, uh, it's gonna cause you to think. Now, let me say right up in the front, there's a lot of hoaxes out there. Had two Englishmen who said that they were the ones who created the crop circles. Problem with, problem is that when they said they created them, others were being created in other parts of the earth at the same time. So it blew them away. A lot of people get into stuff like this sim simply for, uh, for their recognition. You know, they want to be seen, they want to be known. Uh, but there are hoaxes, no question. Just like there are hoaxes of everything else, there are hoaxes of crop circles. But some of the crop circles are so profound in their design that it literally blows your mind when you look at it to think something like that. And I know this is small, but I'll, I'll let you see these notes after the service today. I'll just leave this up here. And you can come up and you can look at some of these crop circles. And uh, they're everywhere over there. Here's one. It gives a three-dimensional appearance. Three-dimensional. It gives depth along with uh, the two dimensions that go before that. And then here, I think I had another one. Maybe not. I thought I had a picture of another one. There's plenty of them online. But here's one. Okay, here's a crop circle. They're beautiful. If you've ever looked at, how many's ever seen them? A crop circle. If you haven't, just get the Google it, and they're all over the internet. There are many of them. I want to talk about a doctor this morning. He is a um, 
He is a PhD in chemistry from Caltech Institute of Technology. He's a scientist, PhD. He's 61 years old. His name is Dr. Horace Drew. He's 10 years old. He was 10 years old when he allegedly saw an unidentified silver windowless craft hovering in the sky near his suburban home in Jacksonville, Florida. 10 years old. That started it. Once he saw this, he was never the same again. You know, he had to know, what did I see? What's going on? What kind of world does this represent? What's happening? And so uh, he, uh, he went and got his education. And now he has been, for over 20 years, dedicated his life to the search, the research into, into uh, crop circles and UFOs. He has moved to Australia. From the, from the states, and he, along with many conspiracy theorists, now let me tell you something about conspiracy theorists, all right? This is an emerging moniker on people that if you believe there is something working behind the government, in other words, a shadow government or something of that nature, then you are, you are, you have, you, you, you're, con you're, you're labeled as a conspiracy, uh, conspiracy nut, okay? There's reason for that. They want you to buy in to the party line. They want you to accept what what's feeds the masses. And they don't want you to dig any deeper into anything. They want to keep the people dumbed down. And so they, they hang that on you. How many's ever read Psalm chapter number 2? There's a conspiracy right before your eyes in Psalm chapter number 2. But he, along with many conspiracy theorists, believe crop circles are the work of aliens or human time travelers. Now, you and I both know, and I've said it a thousand times in here, that when we're talking about aliens, as far as I'm concerned, we're talking about demons. Okay. And if you believe the Bible, you certainly believe in demons. They're, that they're our reality. Where they come from, I don't know. You can hear all kinds of conjecture and, uh, and, and so forth. And I've read all of them and studied them, put time in them. I'm not sure where demons come from, but I do know this. I do know in the Bible they're called unclean spirits. They are wicked spirits. They are intelligent. They have power. And so demon, the demonic world, is something you don't want to mess with. But if you get into the occult or the paranormal and you want power, you're going to get smack into their yard. You're going to get right there with them. But this man says that they, he believes, that, along with other scientists, that crop circles are the work of aliens or human time travelers. Now, what's a time traveler? A time traveler would be somebody from a thousand years in the future coming back to see what's going on now. Now, I don't believe that. I don't believe that can happen. Now, God can do that. Because when the Lord was offered the kingdoms of the world at a moment of time, he was offered the Babylonian kingdom, the Medo-Persian kingdom, the Grecian kingdom, the Roman kingdom. He, could, he probably saw each one of these in successive order laid out right before him. All these great kingdoms that at one time ruled the world. Of course, they were behind him, but he saw them. And they were offered to him, but he rejected it. Who has the power to do that? Satan has the power to do that. So uh, time travel would be one of the, would, would be a plausible uh, explanation, as some of them say, or the work of aliens. Now listen to this. A crop circle is typically defined by standing wheat stems that have been flattened in the shape of a circle or more complex pattern. They tend to appear mainly in developed Western or secularized countries, including Japan. The cause of many of the circles is unknown despite various natural and unorthodox explanations having been put forward. Some crop circles have been proven to be hoaxes. But according to Dr. Drew, a number are legitimate and contain puzzles that can be decoded and linked to time travel and alien life. Now just digest that for a moment. Here's a man with a PhD and he says that some of these crop circles can be decoded. You need to look at them. You need to get online and look at what we're talking about. If you've never seen them, you have no idea what's going on here. If you have seen them, you know that it took some intelligence to do it. 
No question about it. It took some intelligence, high intelligence, to create a crop circle. And so he told the news that he'd visited about two dozen crop circles around the globe in his career. Typically, they were between 50 and 500 meters in length, he said. For the past 20 years, I have been studying UFOs or crop circles, just as other mainstream scientists study conventional subjects. You know that in just the last few weeks, we have had Navy pilots put their career on the line because they tried to shut them up. They put their career on the line and they had video of these UFOs out here that all of a sudden moves in a diagonal. There's no physical possible, according to the law of physics, for it to be able to do that. And it blew the mind of these pilots because they didn't expect to see something like that. What is it? It's a UFO. What is it? It's a demonic entity. Just like we read in Revelation chapter number 13. Don't cut Satan short. He is able to do something that you absolutely could never imagine. He can do it. He's the anointed cherub that covereth. And so, if you remember back there in the book of Exodus when uh, Moses and Aaron went before Pharaoh... Do you remember the story of the snakes? Sure you do. And did you know that uh, Pharaoh's magicians could create snakes? But Moses' snake ate their snake, right? Yes, he did. <laughs> you should thank God for that, amen? <laughs> Greater is he that is in you than he's in the world. But they, could, they, could, they, they did it. They, they, created, they created snakes. So, um, Dr. Drew was one of the handful of scientists around the world who had worked to successfully decode some of the messages in crop circles. According to him, crop circles provide general descriptions of the future. Other crop circles show schematic images of the future for astronomical or human events, he said. He said some of the decoded messages read, now here's what he has found, that he certainly believes that he has decoded the messages from crop circles. All right, here we go. Some of the decoded messages read, much pain, but still time. Believe there is good out there. Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises. We oppose deception. Conduit closing. Have you ever heard the messages that come from the UFOs? Through mediums? Through spiritual connection? You ever heard that? They have a message that's very similar to what I just read to you. That he has decoded from crop circles. Everything that stands up and says that it is the Lord's is not the Lord. Not at all. But anyway... On and on and on they go. they go. How are they made? Dr. Drew said the circles appear to be created by an unknown energy that heats the crops up. It's like microwave energy, but it's something beyond earth science. It can pattern the wheat. No one sees or hears anything, and that's why it's so hard to prove. If there's a craft, it's silent, noiseless. But there's nothing to fear, according to him. Don't be afraid, he said. And then they admit here uh, very readily that there are hoaxes out there, no question about it. Now listen carefully to this. This is probably the most important thing that you'll hear in Sunday school this morning. Earlier this month, U.S. TV host Jimmy Kimmel, have you ever heard of him? Okay, Jimmy Kimmel, asked former U.S. President George Bush if he went through secret files, the UFO documents, when he was in office. Okay. When he was in office, did he go through these files? But instead of laughing off the question, the former commander-in-chief replied, maybe. Mr. Kimball then asked him if there were any great secrets you know that you can't share with people. The former president said, yeah, there are, but I'm not telling you. Many conspiracy theorists and some scientists, including Dr. Drew, argued that Mr. Bush's comments indicated the U.S. government 
knows much more about extraterrestrial life than it has publicly revealed. The politicians are scared they'll lose votes if they talk about it, Dr. Drew said. And on it goes. Now, I'm going to come to a close on that part right here, but I'll leave it with you that the former president of the United States, when questioned, says, is there more? Maybe. But I can't talk about it. I can't tell you. And let it go at that. Is there something going on out there? Yes. Yes. What is it? It's demonic. Revelation 13 says he has power to call fire down from heaven. And it says that his power was given to him by the serpent or by the dragon or by the devil himself. Now that's what happens in Revelation 13. And because he can call fire down from heaven, then people fall down and they worship the image of the beast. They fall, they, then they worship the beast, the Antichrist. So we live at a time probably... That is, uh, in my estimation, some of the most ignorant people in the Bible that this country's ever had. You could, I've read story after story about a hundred years ago, you could talk to the average man on the street about the Bible and he'd know, every, he'd know it from cover to cover. Yeah. Read it, read it many times, you know, might not believe it, but he knew it. Today, you can say anything to people. And they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You can preach anything because they don't know the Bible. This is why most of the preaching today is simply um, inspirational type preaching. Motivational type preaching. Just a little motivational story and inspirational this and that. And that's it. That's the depth of it. And they leave feeling good. And, and, they, and a lot of them think, well, that's the whole purpose of the Bible just to make me feel good. And something of that. And they do. And uh, you hear a lot of people today say, well, it's keep it positive, keep it positive, keep it positive. Well, I like positive too, but there's another side to it. There's a positive side to God. He's holy, holy, holy. The, uh, the, the other side to him is he's a consuming fire. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's a balanced being. So if you know him, you know that. Now, here's a new gospel. He even says it's a new gospel. This is from the Internet. Here's what he says. You are now in a condition where you can receive a short message. When I was on earth, I was not worshipped as God, but was considered merely as the Son of God in the sense that it, in me were imposed truths of my Father and many of his wonderful and mysterious powers. I did not claim or proclaim myself to be God. Thus it ends. He's got a lot more to say there. And he's, this is supposed to come from one who says, I am here, I'm Jesus. But he said, I never did say that I was God. Have you ever read John chapter number 9? John 9. It's as plain as it can be. He's God. The apostle said in 1 Timothy 3.16, without controversy, the greatest mystery of God in us, God was manifest in the flesh. They've stopped preaching that. Churches don't preach that anymore. They don't preach that the Lord Jesus Christ is a unique being who is God manifest in the flesh. And there's never been one like him before him or there'll never be one like him since him. He's the only one. And we're made in his image, but we're not going to be him. There's only one son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why that's important? Because it goes along with the new birth. And they've quit preaching the new birth. Just a few weeks ago, a man sat back here in my office, sat back here, and I listened to him for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and he's rambled and rambled and rambled. But then he said this, he said, now, my pastor, when I went to him and talked to him about preaching, you know, my pastor said to me, well, we'll let you preach, but make sure that when you get up in the pulpit, that you talk about good things. And you talk about the love of God. And don't get into anything that's controversial. And stick with that positive message. He said, if you'll do that, we'll let you preach. Now, what's going on here? And I know that church personally. And I'm not going to name it this morning. I'm going to get into a mess with it. But I know it very personally. And, uh, that's, and that church, believe me, 30, 40 years ago, it had men of God and it preaching the word of God and had been for decades. 
good men, men decade after decade after decade, some of the finest men that's ever preached in this town, preached in that church and pastored that church. But now they've got a pastor there who says, we don't want to rock the boat. We want to keep the message positive, And we want to talk about the good things, make people feel good, and talk about the love of God. Now, what's wrong with this? He's a hireling. He's a hireling. The apostle said, I haven't shunned declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Now, some of this stuff may sound wild. It may sound like it's off the wall. And, uh, and I'm, truly, I believe a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that we have to deal with every day is wild and off the wall. Man, alive, folks. Have you seen people who have horns now planted under their, under their who've, who've tattooed their eyeballs? And they've got metal hanging all over their faces? It's sad. One, some of them have split their tongue. They're, they're defacing their body. And that's one of the surest signs of, of when you get into past paganism and the barbarian. They begin to deface their bodies. And the Bible warns us clearly not to do that. But that's what's happening today. Why? It's part of the culture. Now today, everybody is spiritual. They're spiritual as they define the spirit. Spirituality in America today is cafeteria religion. It is. If you've ever seen anything in your life uh, that is an aberration, it's this, cafeteria religion. You go through the line and you pick out what you like. Create your own spirituality because that's your identity because you're so, you know, you're so, you're so important. <laughs> and that's what you have. That's what you have. And so they seek out churches that make them feel good. We're ready for the Antichrist. We are ready for him. The aliens have messages. Of course, when I say alien, we're talking about demon. They say, we were the ones who designed all life on earth. You mistook us for gods. We were at the origin of your main religions. We were at the origin of your main religions. Now that you are mature enough to understand this, we would like to enter official contact through an embassy. It's coming. You know that DNA is a powerful thing, very powerful. A lot of folks, they don't read much about it because it may be confusing for you. Uh, I don't know, but I want to tell you something. DNA is the code of life. It's a code. It is coded, note carefully, and RNA can read that code. You got DNA here, RNA here, RNA co DNA codes it. This is how it's going to go. RNA comes over and reads it and implements it, okay? That's a simplicity, but that's exactly what's going on. Where'd the code come from? Mother Nature gave it to us, right? It just formed. It just developed of itself. This is the kind of garbage you hear. Here's what happens. Thinking men are saying there's too much here to have just developed accidentally from evolution. It had to come from an intelligent source. And that I agree. Amen. I agree with them. Don't you? How many of you think God's intelligent? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it came from an intelligent source. Isn't that amazing? Think about that for a moment. Since they reject the Bible, they've thrown it out. So where do they turn for wisdom? They turn to the heavens. The Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Night after night, other speech. Day in, day out. When you look above you, read, you'll find that there are what's called 12 stations or 12 zodiacs, 12 chambers. The sign of the zodiac has 12 why 12? Where did they get their names from? How many of you know anything about astrology? Astrology is to be born under a sign. That sign determines what's going to happen in your life. God told them in the Old Testament, do not be dismayed with the signs of the heavens. The heathen are. Before the word of God was ever written, God gave his word to his people. He told Abraham, look up, see the stars. Then he said, tell them. 
How many of you know what a teller is? That's a bank. She counts money. In other words, he said, look up and count the stars. You can, of course, can't count them. And Abraham said, well, I can't do that. That's <laughs> it's impossible. They tell us, I don't know how much is it. I'm going to tell you something. When it comes to science, I believe the Bible is a scientific book as it addresses science. But the Bible is not written as a science textbook. No, the Bible is a much deeper book than that. And any science that disagrees with the Bible, the apostle said, is science falsely so called. Therefore, I accept the Bible. I accept it exactly the way it's written. I believe the Bible. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I believe the Bible. But they say that the light you're seeing from most of the stars right now, you go out at night, go tonight, look up at the heavens, look up at the stars. It took that light millions and millions and millions of years to get here. In plain words, the source of that light could have ceased to exist a long time ago, yet because it took so long for it to get here, see, you're still seeing it. This vast expanse of time, they need it. Evolutionists need this vast expanse of time. But what did God say in Genesis chapter number 1? Let there be light. What's that mean? That means that he brought into existence something that you say, well, you know, it has to grow or it has to have a source. No, it doesn't. God just simply spoke it into existence. There it is, and we see it. Now, whether I understand all that or not, it's irrelevant. But I believe the source of it is the Almighty. We don't need billions and billions and trillions and quadrillions and quadzillions and all the rest of the years. We just need a creator. Okay? But the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Look over here in Romans chapter number 1. Verse number 18. Romans 1 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. You don't even need a Bible to know there's a God. Don't, don't need a Bible. Love the Bible. That'll tell you who he is. But all you have to do according to scripture is just look up. If you can look up there and see this creation and not believe there's a God, you've got a problem. You need some help. You need some help. Remember what I said about the atheist? Next time an atheist says there is no God, say, well, you know what? Tell me how you came to that conclusion. Where's your science for that? What's that based on? Well, he has no idea. Every atheist denies the existence of God based on how he feels. Something's happened in his life. He's mad at God. Or if there's a God, he wouldn't let this happen, and so forth and so on. I remember I was on the ship in the Mediterranean playing with poker with this guy, unsaved, in the Marine Corps. And we were sitting around the table, and, when, and we talked about everything. Talked about everything. I'll never forget him, though. He's a big, tall boy. And he came back and shot back at the rest of us. He said, there ain't no God. He said, if there was a God, he wouldn't have let my little seven-year-old, uh, I think it was his daughter or his niece or somebody in his family, die. And she died with cancer. She suffered. And he went through that with her. And he said, there ain't no God. If there was a God, he would never have let that happen. And, of course, the rest of us were shocked because we were... I knew very few atheists in the military. They say that out, in the, out on the battlefield, in the foxhole, there are no atheists. <laughs> but I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. There is no God, he said. See what it's based on? It's not based on empirical science. It is based on feeling. Feeling. 
you know, he's been hurt. He can't explain it, can't understand it. A lot of things we can't explain or understand. But look what God said in Romans 1. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. See that? There is an invisible world and a visible world. Even his, look at this, eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. God said, walk out into this field at night, look up what's above you, and that's enough right there to get you settled with God, and get put, plant your feet on a firm foundation, and God will give you more truth to go with that truth. That is the beginning of truth. That is the acknowledging of the Creator. Notice that he is called the Creator here. Verse number 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now, I'm not a scientist. There are a lot of things about science I don't understand. Wouldn't, wouldn't wait, you know, make a fool out of myself, try to explain all that stuff. I do know this, though. I know that you get into some stuff that will blow your mind that did not, arrive, did not come from a human being. It came from the mind of God. How smart is God? Well, there's no limitation to how smart he is. Good night. It's amazing. So these creatures, demons, are smart because they've already laid the, ground, the foundation with people that the Bible is not the word of God. It cannot, be de it cannot be depended on. And that your answer is in the heavens. And so we're going to come down and we're going to give you the message that's going to save you and prepare you for eternity. That's the message of the demon. And throw out the Bible. Isn't it amazing how this old book gets assaulted? Really? Have you ever talked to anybody and, and, and opened a Bible and watched them start sweating? Really? Have you ever, have you ever, ever, ever talked to somebody and had a Bible with you? You know, you're just on the street talking to them and they can't look at you. They keep looking at this. This, it's, it's grabbed them. <laughs> they know it's a Bible, and they're scared to death of it. And they ought to be. <laughs> they ought to be scared of the one who wrote it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I want to prepare you, and Lord willing, you know, some of this stuff may sound wild and crazy. And I just touched, I just barely touched on it this morning. There's so much that goes on, so much. But all of them have a message. And that's, that's what's so important about this. they got a message. They're communicating with us. They want, they want us to hear something. And that message is, Jesus, oh, he's great, he's wonderful, but he's just a manifestation of the great intelligence of, these, of us up here. We sent him down to you so he could show you a better way. Blah, 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 and garbage like that. And the Lord Jesus Christ stands head and shoulders, eminently, infinitely above his creation. Amen. He made all things. All right. We've got about five minutes left. If there's anything that you're confused about that I said about crop circles, I'll try to help you with it this morning. I'll, I'll try to answer it. I am certainly no expert on crop circles. I'll say one more time. What do I believe they are? I believe they are a spiritual entity created by spiritual beings that did not come from up there. They came from down here. They are demons. It's demonic. And it is a part of the deception of the end times to get men's mind out of the Bible and to draw them into a supernatural world, spirit world, where they'll be led off into a lie. That's what it is. That's what I believe about it. Yes, ma'am. The purpose of it is to make people lose their mind. Well, like I said about the Mothman, you know, I read that a few minutes ago. Now, folks, these people up there in, uh, in Pleasant Point Pleasant in West Virginia, they've got a monument made to this thing right downtown, okay? Many scores of people have seen it, credible witnesses. So it is something, no question about that. But I just read to you a few minutes ago where some people have gone insane and committed suicide that have had encounters with this thing. 
So what is that, folks? That's a spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. Yes, it's to hurt them, but it's to get their attention. It's to grab them. Man is a curious creature. Isn't that what Satan did in the beginning in the garden? God doth know. He's curious. He, he is. He's curious. And uh, <laughs> that's exactly how he's going to do it. Suicide rate now is just off the chart. Teenagers, young people kill themselves. Just blow your mind. It's just unbelievable. Crop circles. Well, as I said before, I'm not an expert on it, but if you'll remember what I read at the beginning of it, I remember where it said it, these things show up in the industrialized world, world where people are educated, world where they can be communicated with on the level that they want to communicate with them. That's why it shows up there. Mm -hmm. Pardon? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have a word of prayer and we'll let you go. And uh, we'll meet again next Sunday. Pick this up again. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Tommy Chafin, lead us in prayer.